Yo, what up? My name is Derek. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys the final video that I'm probably going to make about custom Windows ISOs. Now, a lot of you have seen a lot of my other videos. I've made a plenty. Um, I've made plenty of videos that talk about custom ISOs. And uh, my initial plan was to make a video kind of going through each ISO version. So like 1709, the best ISO at that version, go to 16 or uh, go to 1803, 1809, 1903, 1909, and then 22H2, and then even go to Windows 11. But then I started testing some things and I realized that those numbers don't really mean much because a lot of the times it's based off of your hardware. So I'm going to talk about that before I get into these results. As you can see, these there are results on your screen right now. We'll be getting into more depth of the results, and I'll talk about what the results are, how I tested them, and stuff like that. But let's get into kind of what I mean by it depends on your hardware. Now, there has been a lot of new hardware that has came out in the past um, like couple years. There's been really good hardware that comes out, whether it comes, it comes to CPUs, GPUs, um, motherboards, you know, Everything that's ever came out in the last couple of years has been vastly improved, and there's not really at this point, unless you have a really old computer and you don't have the money to upgrade or anything like that, um, then I would recommend if you if you ha if you have a really old computer, like a, I would say maybe like a three, four, five, even you know six to seven, maybe even up to ten year old computer, I would 100% recommend testing out a lot of Windows 10 ISOs. Um, the way I would recommend doing it is to have your base windows you currently have installed and then just create like a partition on your drive and then just dual boot between the two, two drives. So test it out on a bunch of other drives. Um, you don't have to go crazy with testing each game if you don't want to. You can do what I did and I'll show you how I tested here. But if you have an old computer, I would recommend testing 1709s, 1803s, 1809s and stuff like that. Now keep in mind there are compatibility issues with certain things. You know, there's certain features that have been added to, you know, newer Windows installs that you might want or you might need on your, you know, end. Um, some games even require and some software require a newer version of Windows to so keep that in mind as well. But most of the time, you will be fine if you just stick to your base um, Windows and ISOs. If you do have a, you know, mid-end to even like a high-end PC, you should be fine with like regular Windows. Um, if you want to get the most out of everything that I would recommend getting a custom ISO that is like 22H2 or Windows 11, if you want the most, or you can just like optimize your own Windows 10 or Windows 11 version. There's plenty of software out there. There's plenty of guides out there that will tell you how to do it. And um, I'm planning on making a guide as well on how to do it. Um, this isn't just going to be ISOs, it's going to be a lot of other things in there like NVIDIA drivers and things like that, so stay tuned. I do have a video coming out talking about that a little bit more, and uh, yes, yeah, so stay tuned to that. That will be out hopefully soon. Hopefully this video comes out actually today, the day that I'm recording this, but um, anyways. Um, so now, like I said, the hardware thing is different. Like I said, I mean, low end nowadays is like $800 to $1,000, and you can still get a really, really, really good computer at that price point even with hardware, like, um, if you go like two generations lower than what the current gen is for like CPUs and GPUs, you will get tons of performance and you will get a ton for what you're paying for. Like, I think if you buy like a 4060, it's equivalent to like a 3070 or something. I don't know if that, those numbers, that what I just said is probably not right at all, but I mean, the 4060s are like $300 or $200. I mean, that's a crazy price for what you're getting. You're getting a really good GPU for like nothing compared to what they used to be a couple years ago when they when they price gouged and everything. Um, but anyways, if you have like I said a newer NPC, I you know I would just recommend doing 22H2s. I wouldn't recommend going out and doing like the 1803s and 1809s. I wouldn't even recommend doing. If you want to, you definitely can if you want to test them, but you don't really need to because the results you're going to notice aren't going to change that much. Um, but anyways, let's get into the benchmarks of what I did. So you can see the certain ISOs that I tested. I didn't test a ton of ISOs. Um, I could have probably tested about five to six more, but I didn't because to be honest with you, the results that I were getting weren't really significantly different than what I wanted. Um, if you are a person that actually wants to get the best, then find a bunch of ISOs at a specific window, Windows version and then test them out um, in your you know specific test you know, that you want to do. If you want to test each game that you play to see which one's best for those games, you can do that or you can do how I tested. So what I did, I installed a brand new ISO. I had a driver, a specific driver that I just, you know, used on every single one using NV Slimmer. So I just had the same driver with the same NVIDIA tweaks. So like if you were to do NV, NV Clean install, 
Um, essentially, what I would just do is I would select the driver, get rid of everything except the driver, and I didn't even do any of the additional tweaks or anything like that. I just did the driver. I tested the driver, and then I um, made sure to use a NVIDIA profile inspector tweak. I did. I used like cats, um, the cat gamer one. Uh, I, I used that one, and then I prov I did the uh, Ava power plan. I set that up. I did my GPU overclock. My BIOS tweaks and, and all that other stuff was still the same. GPU, CPU tweaks, all that stuff was still the same. But um, yeah, what I did is I tested latency mod for five minutes. Um, with that one, the numbers weren't. I, I mean, I, I would show you the numbers, but there aren't significantly significant enough to like really show you a difference i mean if you have an older pc i'm gonna keep saying this but the older your pc is the more difference you're gonna notice between isos and i would would definitely 100 percent recommend testing it if you do an old pc especially latency all those things i would recommend it but for my testing the numbers were off like 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 like the numbers weren't significant enough to really notice which iso is better for you in terms of latency because they're all kind of the same um, it's more of just based off compatibility and how you like the feel of the windows a lot of some of them are optimized over other things uh, but, but performance based they're all kind of the same latency based they're all kind of the same um, but there are other things like I said like like SSD performance and stuff like that some of them have do they, they do have tweaks for those things um, maybe some network tweaks some of them have um, some of them have different post installs and more detailed post installs than other ones so they might you know, improve performance or perform, perform um, improve other things on your computer um, using the post installs. Um, but yeah, then I tested, um, I downloaded Cafe Max. I set that up. I had it to test it for three minutes. I had it test Lava Lamp. I tried Lava, Lava Triangle, but I was getting like 20,000 FPS. And if there were so many frames that it would like crash my Cafe Max. So I tested Lava Lamp. I did Speed 5 for three minutes. And these are the results. Now you'll see the 1809s or the old the versions that aren't Windows 11 or 22H2s are about 100 FPS less. The, the reason for that is because of HAGS. HAGS is Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling, and what that does is essentially helps your CPU and GPU, I think, communicate better um, in terms of giving it performance. So that's why you'll notice the FPS differences are like by 100. So you might think, oh, well, the 22H2s are better. If you turn off HAGS in the 22H2 versions, you pretty much get the same FPS if you were in these ones. So if you are a person that you know wants the most out of everything, then um, I'd recommend tr testing that out. Now, keep in mind, I'm not 100% sure if this is something, but if you use NVIDIA Broadcast, I think HAGS messes with that. That's why I have mine off on my main computer because I use NVIDIA Broadcast. And I'm not 100% sure on this. You might have to look at this yourself. I might have to test this myself again to see if this is the case, but... For some reason, with HAGS enabled with NVIDIA Broadcast, it makes my mic, mic like it like 10x is the the decibels that it per, like puts out. So like it ear rapes everybody's like sound in their microphones and it or in the in their headphones, and it's like really really bad. So I don't know if that's what it causes, but I know that's why I, ha I think that's why I have it turned off on my main computer. So you might have to test it yourself. That might be a Windows thing. That might be a driver thing. There's a lot of other reasons why that might be. It might not just be HAGS, but keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, anyways, these are the results that I'm currently showing you guys. So as you can see, these are the numbers. Like I said, there's, it's kind of hard to like show you guys like differential. Like they're kind of the same. I think the best way to show you is the line charts. Now, this is going to lag a lot, so keep that in mind. So if it's very slow, understand that's the reason. So with Lava Lamp, some of the ISOs actually had this like dip at the start when I started the the cat from X. Don't don't ask me why that happened, but we're just gonna change this to three seconds for the range, and you're gonna see these numbers. Um, they're gonna be a lot more similar. So you can see these numbers. They they look very. It's kind of hard to tell because there's like 13 things here. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to turn some of them off, kind of show you um, what we're working with here. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn off all of the 1809s because. A lot of the older versions are not the greatest in terms of like showing you guys this. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to turn off all of the older ones that aren't 22 H2s and Windows 11. I'll, I'll show you the Windows 11 one just because, uh, but I'm gonna do that real quick. And I'll be right back. Alrighty. So we have all of the 22 H2 versions here. And I think we even have revised Windows 11 version. We do. And you're going to see there's not a lot of differences between these numbers. Now, 
some of them are smoother than other ones as you can see some of these like blue ones back in the back here are kind of like fluctuating and then there's like some numbers in here that are a little bit more fluent so i'm going to turn off the ones that are kind of bad so this is revi revise is not very good so we're going to hide that one and let's see here this one seems pretty high now this is the kernel this is the one i'm currently using the kernel os 22 h2 light one i'm going to show you guys some numbers in here in a second that makes that one probably the best even though the fps numbers don't look smooth um we're going to turn this one off because they fluctuate a decent amount so these are the three that don't fluctuate a ton when it comes to numbers and you can see what i mean by um, fluctuating as you can see they don't really have big jumps like if you were to compare it with like this one you can see this one jumps a decent amount um but i'm not 100 percent sure why it does that uh, i don't think that's iso because i think it's just kind of like might just be the testing results but as you can see these ones are a lot smoother so they don't really fluctuate as much these ones there's not really a clear winner here they're all kind of got their ups and downs i would say that XOS would get off of this one. And these are the two probably best ones that you can use. You have kernel OS 22H2 and GGOS, right? So you can see these numbers look very smooth in terms of FPS. Now this is FPS, this isn't frame times, this isn't latency, this is FPS. Now, this is where the numbers get interesting. So if we go to frame times, and you can see here, there isn't a lot of fluctuation in these frame times when you compare them. Now, I wish this chart wouldn't go to 30 milliseconds. I wish it would just be like to 10 because none of these go over to 10. So I don't know why it does that. But if we enable things like, let me see. So this one's XOS. You can see XOS is kind of fluctuating. Let's go look at this one. So this is kernel OS 22H2 light, right? Now, if you look at the numbers here, I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit, kind of see if I can get some better numbers here. So if you look at these numbers, right, so this is just like a certain part of the recording here. So we have these certain windows here, okay? So we have kernel OS light, so this one. So if you look at the numbers, right, the frame times don't look like they jump like crazy. It's kind of like a baseline. It's kind of like a straight line. You don't really notice a lot of jumps. There is a, there is jumps, but it's not as significant as something like XOS where you can see there are a lot of jumps as well. Um, they, they kind of all look the same in terms of the jumps, but this one doesn't have as many high jumps as like something like um, kernel OS 22H2. As you can see, there's a lot more jumps there, like that are higher up. And then GGOS, same thing, right? You can see there's a lot of jumps in there, the purple. So in terms of like keeping the numbers low, if there are jumps, the jumps aren't as noticeable as with like the other ones. Um, I think that's something to keep in mind with this one. Um, also, if we go to variance, you can also see the numbers here. So these are the comparisons of all the, the newer Windows versions. So this will kind of shows you the difference between two consecutive frame time values. And you can see kernel OS 22H2 Lite is the lowest here. Um, it has some of the best numbers here. These other ones are really close as well. Um, like I'm not going to give you guys a clear winner, but in my personal opinion, 22H2 Lite is the best one for kernel OS. Um, so, but I wouldn't, like say you should go out and use that one i'm just saying that you might want to test maybe these four or these five like i said compatibility is also an important factor i know some people like to use microsoft store and i know some of these isos do not have microsoft store installed into them some of them do i know revi does and i'm pretty sure atlas does and i think even this kernel os 22 h2 version does so if you want windows store um i recommend those i think xos also does as well so keep that in mind um Let's see here. If we go to, I'm gonna show you guys some, some more statistics here. So this is the analysis. So let me show you the kernel OS light numbers here. So you can see the fluctuations aren't crazy when it comes to these numbers. And this is also an important number too, the stuttering. So with the stuttering, you can see the numbers for smooth is 99.8. If we go to like XOS, this one's at 99.5. Revi is 99.7. Kernel OS 22H2 is 99.5, GGOS is 99.6, and then we have Atlas, which is 99.7. So you can see they're all kind of similar. The best one so far is, like I said, the Kernel OS Lite. And like I said, you don't see the numbers jump up super high during these tests, right? Like a lot of the a lot of them, every couple seconds, have the jumps up to five milliseconds. This one only jumps up to about two. Besides the start, the start, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really say anything with that. 
And another thing that I think is important when looking at these numbers is these 1% lows. I think this one has some of the best 1% lows over the other ones too. Um, so keep that in mind as well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to these um, numbers here. Uh, let me kind of turn on some of these features here. So when it comes to, like I said, here's the FPS for that one. Here's another FPS test. It's kind of hard when these range don't copy over, but some of them are smoother than others. Like I said, I mean, like I said, you want to test these. These are all, that's what I say to a lot of people is test to see which one's the best for you. You do not want to just go out and be like, oh, this is the best one because I say it. Don't just always assume that that's what it's going to be because you have different hardware than I do. If you have older hardware, I'd recommend testing the older ones, like I said. Um, yeah, I don't really know if there's anything else I need to say about this. Like I said, um, this is kind of the only test um, that matters. I mean, if you want to, um, I would recommend testing specific games to see what they feel like. I know some ISOs feel different than other ones. Some of them feel like they're better than the other ones, so keep that in mind. Um, a couple final things I want to talk about before the video ends. This is, you know, this is some stuff I just want to talk about. So I'm going to have a Discord channel or Discord server coming out soon. And inside the Discord server, I'm going to have a feature called um, My Benchmark. So it's going to be a paid server or paid channel that is going to have um, My Benchmark. So I'm going to put these benchmarks in there. And at some point, I'm thinking about possibly installing them and actually testing specific games like Fortnite and Apex and, you know, things like that. Um, but my main thing is to find the best ISO and then just test specific features um, when it comes to optimization, whether that be BIOS tweaks and GPU overclocks, CPU overclocks, um, specific registry tweaks, things like that. I'm, my plan is to test them, give you guys benchmarks on those, and uh, yeah. Um, I most likely probably will make a video on each one of them that I test, but I'm not going to give you guys full benchmarks. That's going to have to be something you guys pay for. I know some of you probably don't want that, but it's just something for me to like push to make me continue doing this um, because, you know, this isn't, uh, it's, it takes a lot of effort to do these benchmarks. So keep that in mind. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Um, it's not like the other ones that I've done in the past. It's a little bit more informative in terms of understanding frame times and stuttering and stuff like that. And I think that's more important than FPS. Unless you need FPS, then I would recommend looking into, you know, all of the parameters. But anyways, I hope you guys like this video and peace out.